Or no, just if you stay the on the bridge. bridge. Okay. okay. We didn't do that. Good luck, boys. You too. Can you, can you just kill one? Only if you guys do. Alright, well, it's 6.30. We're just splitting off the path from these guys. You got good audio. I don't know my warehouse on. Yes, Jake. Okay, Aaron. You gonna stay smart like that all morning or? Yep. Okay. But Aaron and I are just gonna slip down this access path. And I've never been in here in the daylight. The only time I've ever been in here was when I hunted here with Greg. Came in in the morning and we sat all day back in there. So based off what I saw last night, all the deer are gonna be feeding off to the north of us. We're gonna sneak back in here to this corner. Get close to the field, kind of between the bedding area, and uh, see if we can get somewhere where we can see a little ways down in there. But we gotta get moving. I did oversleep. set up for a little bit now and I can't get him to stop yelping at the turkeys so I just called up a hand yeah I can't imagine we're gonna see any deer you just keep scaring them all away with that turkey calling so I'm just kidding but we had I don't know you you said there's about 15 you thought I would say yeah anywhere from 10 to 15 does they all looked like walk across that field that I saw them on last night there's also people that have shot across the road, so at any point one could come running across that field down into this bedding area, but we're going to sit here a while probably just because it is so calm. I don't know how effective we'll be walking around and trying to sneak up on anything in these conditions, so we're going to let the deer stack in there, keep our eyes peeled. Going right towards those guys, actually. I can keep... I mean, that, their direction of travel right now would be pretty much straight towards where those guys are at. Well, it's the second to last day. We're touch light because nature may or may not have called a couple times for me on the way in. Feeling that gun season diet, you know. Haven't been eating at Greg and Mindy's. Been eating a lot of, uh, you know, on the go type stuff. Feeling pretty weird. But Keith and I are planning on getting up to the head of this ditch up here. It looks like it opens up on the map. I've never been back in here. Greg was hunting back in here, but like I said, never been to this spot. But based off what I can see on the map, it looks like it's going to be one of the bigger openings that we're going to be able to shoot this gun down through. I'm just creeping along now, listening because it's really calm and crunchy. We should be able to hear deer before they hear us, as long as we're going slow enough. Just two steps at a time, stop for a couple of minutes. Once we get up another 50 yards, we'll set up.
obviously there's nothing we can do about it. It's just running around us. But what I was about to say is, if it leaves, it may just kick deer around in this bedding area. It's not... Oh, there goes another buck. by deer, which isn't the worst thing. But they're all crossing up on top. We may have to move up there or somewhere up a little bit here after a while, but I was saying a lot of people would be frustrated with that dog. There's a deer coming right towards this kid. A bunch of deer, a bunch of deer. Careful. Just no, yep, right. Coming right down the pipe here. Keith just sent us a picture of him holding that dog about 20 minutes ago. Surprised he's not moving any deer out. Now here he is. I'm sure that's what those does ran from. Aaron and I just got all ready because we heard something coming. But just that dog, he's just out here running around. But I was telling Zach before, probably not a bad thing, because like if a dog's just running around like that, the deer aren't going to leave the bedding area. They're just going to move around them, I think.
All right. I don't know. You just bumped that little buck right out of there. Yeah. Better load this puppy up. I mean, at this point in the season, I wouldn't be complaining about one of these deals where you're like 20 yards off the path and you're just like, hey, there's one, boom. <laughs> Take it any way we can get it at this point.
well, we pretty much had non-stop action all night. Got cut off from that first in interview. Because the shed buck walked right down the pipe. 40 yards broadside. But he eventually worked up into the field. Once we saw that, we expected that was going to be the trails the bucks were going to use. Sure enough, the deer just kept parading right down that transition line that we're set up on. We eventually saw another shooter. I mean, he was at 60 yards, plenty comfortable with that shot. I was rock solid on him, but I had branches in the way, and I didn't want to force anything because I thought he was going to come to 40 yards. It's pretty frustrating. I should have, should have figured it out and not just taken it for granted, but I don't know. I tried in a bunch of different stuff, and just from my side of the tree, I really don't have a great shot at that spot. It was worth the aggressive push, and... That brings up what I was going to talk about earlier. I mean, we're in the heart of this bedding area. I mean, we're, we're even going through the middle of this thing down this ditch to get way back in here. Just barely threading our, the needle with our wind, going right back down where we walked in. Obviously, we bumped deer going in, but this is that same area, like I said, that Greg's been hunting. I don't know exactly where Greg is hunted. I haven't really talked to him much because I was in Ohio when he was hunting back here mostly. I think that he was hunting right back in this area, but it's just stacked and we few branches away, man. I really wish we'd have got a good shot at that buck because then we'd be celebrating and be able to sleep in tomorrow. We're getting pretty, pretty tired here. Nine days seasonal wear on you. Especially when it's just like Opportunity after opportunity seems to be slipping away. I'm glad we brought the saddles because it got us up enough to be able to shoot and we can shoot multiple different directions. It'll be interesting to see what Jake saw, but we're gonna have to try to slip out of here. I think we're gonna leave everything here. We're probably gonna come right back in here first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'm having a blast, but I'm ready to notch that tag, dude. Well, we're out trying a little bit of small game hunting. I just shot a squirrel, beautiful fox squirrel with the 22. Jake's carrying around his Walmart edition bow. We're gonna try to get a couple more here, but we just want to re quickly recap kind of the gun season, how our strategy worked, what we would do a little bit differently, and just kind of quick recap of it, I guess. I think as far as strategy goes, the wind bumping was really successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were having a blast doing that. It was hard not to do it just because we were seeing so many deer. And then the other Eric thing- Eric shot one doing yeah. that, and then you, that's how you got your shot off. And, so. and just multiple, multiple deer in range. I mean, you know, really wind bumping and setting up on funnels, trying to anticipate that, you know, gun hunting pressure really was working for us and worked better this year than other years. But unfortunately, we didn't fill any tags and we're pretty okay with that. I mean. We know we felt like it worked. We both had opportunities at bucks, mm -hmm. and with all that pressure, if you find a spot like we did the last couple of days, and like you guys saw in this video, if you find the spot where they're all pushed to, it can be a really fun time mm -hmm. to hunt. Yep. On the last day, Keith and I went back into that spot and set up in the same tree that we were in. S sat in there all day, saw deer, had deer in range, but sadly, again, the only deer that was actually <laughs> in range was that dang shed buck. It's a good spot. We'll be, I'd say some, I'd say Gregster will be back in there. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Coming up next, we're going to have a little bit of maybe small game. We're going to have some late season here in Iowa still. Greg's got that tag, mm -hmm. got a couple tags, four tags to be exact. And then shortly after the first of the year, we're going to be going down into Alabama and hunting public land down there. Getting pretty excited about that. It's going to be, it's going to be something that we've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a fun challenge. But we're going to take a little break here during Christmas, spend time with family and friends, and then we'll be back after it down in Alabama. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed all the gun hunts that we had during the second season. It's a lot of fun, but I'm looking to go shoot at another <laughs> squirrel. Maybe we can get that bow. Ripping at one here down through the timber. Mm -hmm. Let's go find one. <laughs> <laughs>